What's up everybody, we're back with another raid guide, and today we're taking a look at Huntsman Ultimore on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them, and our overall tactic for this fight. So for this encounter you want 2 tanks, 5 healers, and 13 DPS. Having a few immunities helps a lot for this fight, as well as DKs for grips, and if you have a few more immunes it sure doesn't hurt. And I'll go over why in just a bit. Bit. The new thing on Mythic is the Empowered Sin Seeker. Every doggo adds a mechanic to the Sin Seeker ability, if you will, which stays for the rest of the fight, so it never resets, just adds on. So on pole, Sin Seeker is empowered by Margor, which is Vicious Bolt. Each Sin Seeker arrow's damage is increased by roughly 80k, and this damage can be split between players hit by it. So due to this, you'll always need 2-3 to three players soaking each arrow so they don't die. Now when Vargast joins the fight, Sin Seeker gets empowered by Pierced Soul. Players struck by Sin Seeker summons a Pierced Soul, works just like the tank mechanic Rip Soul. These will need to be healed up before they reach the boss so he doesn't get a damage increase. And lastly, you have Hecutes, which adds Shatter Shot to Sin Seeker. Any targets struck also inflicts 8k nature damage to any player within 5 yards. So once Hecutes is out, you have to stack in Sin Seeker, but without being within 5 yards of another player, while also not taking any damage so the soul spawn on high HP. Or, you know, just she's it. Bring on the immunities! And I'll go over more on this in a bit. But you can immune soak Sin Seeker to make it extremely simple. Almost as simple as checking out my Twitch, Stanky Gaming. Other than that, everything hurts more, has more health, etc, etc. Now, before you start, you want to put up some marks, so cue to awesome picture. Three marks in the back of the room, these are your Sin Seeker marks. In Big Wigs or DBM, you can turn on auto markers for this. Each player that's targeted by Sin Seeker will get a mark, move to the same raid marker. Very simple. Tank boss where we have our skull mark, and when Sin Seeker comes you'll get a perfect spread for the arrows that converge right behind boss. Now if two players with immunity soak the Sin Seeker where the arrows converge, they will be hit by all three arrows, take no damage but still counts as splitting it. So all Sin Seeker targets survive and you only need two soakers for all three arrows, which means fewer soul spawning from pure soul and no risk of shatter shot AOing down the raid. In total, you want to be able to immune four sets of Sin Seekers if possible. Two when second doggo spawns and two when third doggo spawns. Now with that said, let's lunge into it. Tank boss and doggo on top of skull mark. Range stay loosely spread around the room to avoid having everyone hit by scattershot at the same time. It targets random players, so yeah, spread. If you're targeted by vicious lunge, move into melee so people can help soak it. And healers, be prepared to heal through the bleeds. And tank swap on two stacks of Jagged Claws if needed, or just have one tank it throughout the entire phase. And Sin Seeker targets, make sure to run to your raid marks. Have a green mark? Go to green mark. Aim to only get one Sin Seeker during the first doggo, which is Margor. This makes it a tad less hectic, and if you defeat Margor just before the second Sin Seeker, its timer is reset, so 30 seconds without any Sin Seeker shenanigans. Now as soon as Bargas spawns, Pull him to boss, but move him far away before the rip soul. And whichever tank's tanking Bargas during it, make sure to use cooldowns or personals and make sure the tank is at full health before rip soul hits, so there's less to heal on the soul that spawns. Keep Bargas down in the corner until he spawns the two shades of Bargas, then move Doggo back to boss. Make sure that both of these shades are instantly CC'd, they cannot get any casts off, and you want to keep them crowd controlled. When you get Sin Seeker again, move to marks and have two immunes stand roughly where we have our moon mark to soak all three of the Sin Seekers. Healers be prepared to heal up the two souls that the immunes spawned, they'll be near full health so it should be very easy. And of course make sure to top the three souls that spawned on the raid marks, these will require a little bit more love. When the shades of Bargasts are around 60-70% to energy, grip them on top of boss and nuke away. Keep CCing them if they're about to get a cast off while you're killing them. If you're struggling with this, you could grip them in one by one, but if possible, killing both of them at the same time is just more efficient. We had two unholy DKs for this that both gripped and used the DK Necrolord ability that grips a target every now and then to get him on top of boss and Bargast fast, but you can achieve the same with some running and knockbacks if needed. You'll most likely get two Sin Seekers and two sets of shades during the Bargast phase, and you deal with both of them 
the same way as before. Once Hecuti spawns, drag him to boss, players targeted by Petrifying Howl make sure to drop him away from raid and marks if possible. Tanks move Hecuti's when he has around 3 to 4 stacks and healers be prepared for raid wide damage when this happens. Whenever we need it to move we just back pedal straight back towards where we have our green mark. Next time back to skull, then back to green, etc etc. Just to make sure boss is still in line with the marks in the back for Sin Seekers. Deal with Sin Seekers the same way as you did before, two immunes per set of Sin Seeker and you shouldn't get more than two in this phase either. Now if you have two shades of Bargast up when Hecuti spawn, drag him on top of boss once they hit 70% energy, nuke him down fast. We used Bloodlust on the second set of shades. And if you run out of immunities or you simply don't have enough to begin with, you can sacrifice the last Sin Seeker targets during Hecuti's so you don't have to deal with any souls. And that's about it. Only other tip I can give is don't under underestimate the overall damage taken from Spreadshot. Make sure to spread. If you have any questions at all about this encounter, hit me up in the comments or become a patron. As a patron, you get access to the Stanky Discord where you can find Raid Week or as healing notes or immune setup for this fight, etc. etc. Don't forget the usual stuff like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And I'm also now streaming all of our progression on Twitch, so make sure to check that out. It's on Mondays and Tuesdays. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.